Thank you so much, everybody. It's so good to be here in Manchester. 5,000. 5,000 screaming fans. I'm almost humbled. I'm almost humbled. Thank you so much, everybody. Let's get this started. Good to see you, Carl. You know I had to come out on the rolls. You know I had to come out on the rolls. I'm the face of rolls. I'm the face of rolls, Royce. <laughs> this is something. Connor, this is something else. You are, pardon the pun, notorious for visualizing things, right? But be honest with me. Did you ever envision something like this? 5,000 people coming to watch you just speak, not compete, but just speak. Honestly, it's unbelievable. I'm so, I'm so grateful for every single one of you, as I swear on my life. I swear on my, honestly, I truly mean that. I truly, truly mean that. I know I'm a cocky motherfucker. And I know you love me for it, but I'm truly humbled and truly grateful for every single person in this room. I know that true fans are in this room, and we're going to have a good night tonight. We're going to put the fee up, we're going to celebrate, we're going to talk business, we're going to have a great night tonight. So everyone, get comfortable, sit down, we're going to have a chat, and then you will be involved as well, so please get comfortable and have a seat. Connor, we have a lot to discuss. Let's, let's talk, brother. Let's talk. I know you're looking to dig. Yes. I know you're looking to dig deep, and you can, no problem. Let's I, do it. I didn't come from New York just to chit-chat, my friend. There are a lot of answers that people want, and uh, let's try to get them. Let's start with this. Since winning around two and a half months ago at MSG, November 12th, you've remained relatively quiet, and there have been opportunities for you to speak up. Things have happened, and we'll get to those in a second. Why have you kind of stayed away from the limelight? Look, I'm just, I done everything I said I was gonna do. I was laughed at. I was literally laughed at to win that second world title. I take, when I first came in to, I was gonna take these two world titles down. Laughed at, that's never gonna happen. An Irish man even winning the UFC. When I said that, I was laughed at. So, I said I was gonna win the two world titles, I won them. I've done everything I said I was gonna do. I just wanna take a step back, chill. I wanna celebrate with my fans. I've been working so hard, my fans have followed me all over the world, so I just wanna enjoy my life and chill for a little bit. A lot has gone on, I've stayed, I've stayed in the game. Sure. I might have been as vocal, but I've been tactical. I, I, every, every move is a calculated step, make no mistake about that. It's only what, it's only January of 2017. I'm already the face of the UFC. I'm already the face of boxing. I'm already the face of the WWE. And I'm already the face of Hollywood. And now tonight I'm the face of Manchester. Yep, yeah! <laughs> and that's only January. That's only January. Well, you see what I got in store for February. When you think back to that fight against Eddie Alvarez and the moment MSG breaking the gate record, not only for UFC, but for Madison Square Garden itself, and the way you beat him, how dominant it was, did that exceed your expectations? Did you really, because I know you always talked about winning two belts, but to do it like that on that kind of stage, did that go even better than you thought it was gonna go? If I'd have cut his feet after the first knockdown, I would've stopped him in one. I made an error in the first round, I got greedy. I tried to dive on the KO, and he scrambled out the back of me. And that's the only reason he survived as, after the first round. If, if you look at the second round after the knockdown, I catch the feet. I control the frame. When you floor a man. Get to Floyd in a second, but I recall before you fought in Boston the second time, when you fought Dennis Seaver, you did a media workout and you had two belts and you were walking around the cage. It was very important for you to be a two weight world champion at the same time. When you won that fight and a second belt did not appear in the cage, you seemed genuinely upset that the moment was being robbed. Do you think that that was a conscious effort on the UFC's part or do you think 100%. it was 100%. Why? I mean, I don't know why, you tell me, I haven't a clue, but in the media I stay it many times. All the way up is a dream to, to climb above that cage and raise them two belts. That was in every interview I've ever done. So, when I won the fight and they strapped, that Tennessee situation, when I grabbed the two belts, 
was before I'd even got one belt. Yes, yes. That's how much the power of visualization, that's how, that's how strong the power of visualization is. I wasn't even a UFC world champion at that time. And already I was grabbing two of them and flaunting it in everybody's face. I believed it was going to happen. I put the work in for it to happen, and it happened. So it's a, it's a strong thing, the power of visualization. But on the night when I won that second belt, and they didn't have that belt for me, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, where the fuck is my... That was all not, that was all, that was me just saying, what the fuck is going on here? I don't know what would have happened if they hadn't have presented that second belt to me. I probably wouldn't have left the octagon until that second belt was presented. And when the second belt was presented, I probably wouldn't have stepped back in it. So I don't know what, um, I don't know what that was about. You'll have to ask them. Why they try and do that, I don't know. But sometimes we, we you know, listen, business is, it's a crazy business. I know all these interim belts and all these fake belts and all this type of stuff is getting done, but business is business. I don't hold no grudges over that. I still, at the end of the day, my, my shadow looms large over all of that featherweight division, over all that lightweight division, over the entire UFC, so they can try and fool the fans all they want. But the fans know, they know what's what. It was glaring because you seem genuinely upset and they had to run to the back to get it from Tyron Woodley, who you had an issue with earlier in the week. When you went to the back, did you say, hey... He well handed it over, spish on. <laughs> he spish on that motherfucker, yeah? He had that thing spish on for me. What, what was the mood like in the back? Because I heard that you were, maybe, and correct me if I'm wrong, a little upset that the Fertitas didn't come back for a little toast, as was tradition, right? None of that transpired at Madison Square Garden, correct? Look... Not, not at that time. At the, at the Diaz 2 fight, after it had been sold, I was expecting them to be there. But for the, the, the New York You're fight, over hell it. no, they're gone. The Fertitas are legends. You will never see a play like that, where they roll in and they buy a company for $2 million and turn it into $4.2 billion. That is like insane. I'm not going to say, hey, Lorenzo, come to me in New York City. Frank He's was on there. His yacht. Frank was at He's the fight. Yeah, chilling. I didn't see, I didn't see, I didn't see Frank at the fight. But look, it was, a, it was me and Lorenzo thing. I still keep in constant contact with Lorenzo. I was talking to Lorenzo today. I'm going to head out to Las Vegas to sell some things, and I'm going to meet up with Lorenzo um, when I head out there. But listen, they are dons. They run Las Vegas, so they're chilling on the yacht. They're probably. I just picture them on a yacht with like a big 50, 50 foot, like one of those screens on a yes. yacht watching UFC New York. So look, they are inspirations of mine the Fertitas, is how they handle it. Even their family, the way they, the way they, the way they carry them. Like I've spent a lot of time with them, a good bit of time. I learned how important family is and how important those close to them are. And these are all things I'm trying to learn and trying to, as I grow and carry on on this journey, you start to kind of realize what's important and what's not important. Family is a lot more important than, than I probably give it, you know, I, earlier on when I'm chasing this, I'm so dedicated, so, you know got blinkers on I can't see nothing you know but you see the way they are and people at the very very top they keep those that are with them close and and that's the reason for their success they celebrate their surroundings and they they climb and they reach that success that they reach again two million dollar company to 4.2 billion insane so there was no hard feelings about them missing New York I have I, I hope I know they were watching I got the messages afterwards so I'm very happy with it you said you're going to Las Vegas in, in, in a short amount of time to settle some business. What do you mean by that? Um, there's a lot of business to settle in Las Vegas. They tried to find me $150,000 for throwing a bottle of, well, it was a can, but whatever. <laughs> we call it a bottle of water and say no, say no more about it. Um, $150,000 fine, I was like, when that happened, I was like, when I rang in the court or whatever, I didn't even think it was a real court. I was like, this isn't a real court. This isn't like legal. These can't really, they just want a bit of respect. And I went in, I showed my respect. Look, I'm not gonna try and blame. I'm not gonna try and point fingers. You threw what forced, even though I didn't, you know what I mean? Whatever, I'm not gonna, I just said, I owned up, manned up, said, listen, I fucked up. I won't do it again. And then it's like, so you'll accept that. And then Pat Lumbaugh is like, so you'll accept any fine that we give you? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And then 150K fine, all in favor say aye, aye, bum, bum. Boom, they start hitting the gavel. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? 150 grand? I still have a motherfucker 150 euro from about 10 years ago. And these, these cowboys over there. And now look, I'm gonna get, 
I'm gonna fuck this whole shit up again. I love the Vegas Commission. We come to an understanding. I'm gonna fly out there, fix it. I'm gonna get my Las Vegas Boxing Commission. And then we see where the fuck Floyd's at. <laughs> So as of right now, did they deny you a license to box because of this outstanding issue? They're using it as leverage to get it, but whatever. We'll no, no, we, we have it fixed. Okay. It's, it's fixed, that's what I'm saying, it's fixed. All right, all right. I said, if I keep going, I'll dig myself back in. No, Fair but enough. no, we figured it out, we Fair fixed enough. it. Everyone came together. They realized I brought $400 million in revenue in one fight to the beautiful city of Las Vegas. They realized that if I'm not there, ain't nobody bringing money into that city. So we figured it out. We got together, we're gonna make it work. We'll pay the fine, we'll work out a way to pay the fine. We'll do the video that they want, they want like an anti-bullying campaign. You know, we we'll respect that. You gotta, you gotta own up to your responsibilities. I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, you know, you gotta, you gotta step up and own up to mistakes you've made. That's, 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 what, that's what men do. That's what, that's what people who are, have grown and, 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 and passed a new stage go and do. So that's what I'm gonna go and do. And then I'm gonna go get that boxing license. And then, and then we'll figure it out uh, where it goes from there. A funny thing happened after New York. You win, you're on a massive stage, and then almost days later, everyone starts imitating you. Mark Gasol of the Memphis Grizzlies starts doing the strut. Justin Bieber, Pogba, this becomes a thing that is being seen everywhere. Did that blow your mind? Because I, you've been doing that for a few fights, right? And then all of a sudden after New York, it became part of pop culture. What are you thinking when you're seeing this everywhere? Like massive stars imitating you. I'm thinking Vince McMahon must be pissed. <laughs> but I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. I stole that walk and that walk is now mine. And now Vince, are any of those pussies over in the WWE will do anything about it. That's my walk. I created that walk. I made that walk. So look, I don't know. It's, it's amazing to see like, it's amazing to cross into that, to, into that. Uh, they're all different cultures, all different sports, all the NFL players, all the NBA players, all the uh, football players over here. Look, it's, fighting, is, fighting is everywhere. All American football is over there. Yeah. Soccer or football, we call it, is over here. Fighting is fucking everywhere. And it's finally, we're finally seeing that. So I'm very happy, I'm very proud of it. And look, it's, it's a beautiful time for the fight. It's a beautiful time for me in the fight game where, where, where we're finally being recognized for the work we do. You know, it's a dangerous, dangerous business. I've witnessed everything in the game. I've witnessed the lowest of the lowest, the highest of the highest. So I'm just happy that we are right now at the very pinnacle and everyone, everyone is respecting us and, and showing us the love that we, we deserve. Okay, so I've been dying to ask you this question for months now, okay? You told me when they announced the fight against Eddie Alvarez that they will need an effing army to take the two titles away from you. And in the end, they sent out a press release that was two sentences long and they had one of the broadcasters read it. When I first found out that they were gonna do the interim title and strip you of the belt because Daniel Cormier got injured prior to UFC 206, it, it did not register in my mind. It did not make sense. How did you find out that they were gonna go ahead and do this and what was your reaction? Before I even got the belt, they wanted to strip me. That's what I'm saying. Before I even won the belt, it was like, you gotta give this one up. You gotta say, let me go and get the thing first. Let me go make the history. Let me go and do what's never been done before. And it seemed to be a problem with that for whatever reason. I don't know what the problem was, but again, a lack of communication. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the, I'm not, I, I, I just go into my shell and just do my thing. I'm just my own man, do my own thing. So when they're trying to hit me up, I'm not trying to answer too much. I'm mean, there, when I'm hitting them, them up, they're not trying to answer too much, so whatever. You can, ha currently the featherweight, all, all they had to do was ask. If they literally came to me and said, hey, Connor, I know you're preparing to have a baby. I know you're chilling. If you want to fight for this featherweight belt in March, just nice, n a nice time, I would have went in and would have slept Holloway or, or, or the guy who's fighting, or Aldo or whoever they wanted. No problem. All they had to do was ask. Instead, they created an interim belt. They gave back the unified belt to a guy I KO'd in 13 seconds. A guy I dominated is now the interim tile. Look, I, I was almost... I was almost a little bit embarrassed for the way it was playing out. Like, is that really the way, is that really how bad it's gone? They just need to kind of create all this fake stuff to sell some stuff, but it's still so shit. It's still so nothing. So, I don't know, look. They never yeah. asked? What? They never asked for your permission? Before there was conversations, not after. After it just kind of went silent and then it just, then it just happened. But I mean, 
keyboard warriors. They can type anything and people think, it's, it's, that ain't real. You said they, they wrote out a press release. What did they do? Did they send that army? Did they physically take that belt from me? Have, has, has anyone laid a finger on me to take that second belt or the first belt? No, I'm still a two-way world champion. Make no mistake about it. Uh, and that's it. So do you intend on defending that featherweight title at some point? Do you intend on defending? Do you still consider yourself the featherweight champion? Like I said, all they had to do was ask. Huh. All they had to do was ask. Right now I'm walking around about 75 kilos. That's like 160 pounds, I guess. Feather... Don't get me wrong, it's a heavy cool. It's a heavy weight cool. But tell me one time, tell me one time I've missed it. Tell me one time I've missed the featherweight limit. You know what I'm saying? At the Aldo fight, there was no IV. We weren't allowed IVs at the Aldo fight. And it was the first time I brought in a, nut a nutritionist. I done it the best weight cut I've ever had. And I didn't use an IV to rehydrate. And I went in and knocked my opponent out in 13 seconds. So they can, how can they claim I'm not the featherweight world champion? How can they claim I'm not a featherweight no more? Sign up, sign up the dotted line. And I'll take a featherweight fight, no problem. But make no mistake about it. You sign me up against any of these featherweights, they're not gonna show up. And that's fact. You sign me up against Jose Aldo, how confident are you that that fight takes place? He ain't showing up again, Ariel. You know that. 30 second knockout. He pulled out before. Two years traveling the world. The featherweights are praying, praying that I don't come back down there. So, whatever. Okay, so now you win the lightweight title two months ago, and there's an interim lightweight title on the line in a little over a month. Did they ask you about that? Because, I mean, that's just two months ago you wanted. Not a whisper like... about that one. But again, like I said earlier, I don't... Business is business. You've got to create... You've got to create this... You've got to create. You know what I'm saying? You can't just let these... Because the two guys that are fighting for that interim belt are bums. They can't... I, I always look at, the, look at the game, the fight game, or the UFC, and it's like... I always wonder to myself why... Sometimes I wonder to myself why it's never broken through that next level. Why... Why no one before me has ever got to that next level? Because they're all dog shit. And I don't mean, like, they're, they're not the sloppy, messy, chinny. It's, it's not pretty to look at. And it's the same with these two clowns, two bums, fighting for an interim belt. They should be very, very happy that I'm taking my, take, chilling out, taking a break. And they have this little chance to think that they're up there. But in reality, they're nowhere close. They'd both be knocked out stiff. Both chinny, both wild. Too sloppy. Listen, whatever. I'm chilling right now. I have my eyes on one thing, and that's Floyd Mayweather. Okay, so that's the thing I have my eyes let's on. Let's talk about Floyd now. That's let's talk. Let's finally address this. So, it starts I'm sitting in the house. Floyd offers 15 million. Yes. Then Dana offers 25 million. I'm sitting in my house watching the millions go up. <laughs> like this is all right. This is all right. Right. Where does it stand right now? We've got to get, me and Floyd have got to get together and talk and figure it out the same way him and Manny figured it out. Once we come to a number, once we come to a, a set number that I'm happy with, he's happy with, then we go to the customers, then we go to the promoters, the buyers, and then we get it done. So that's, that's next. So I'll go to Vegas, I'll handle the commission, or, or, or we'll, we'll figure that situation out, and then we'll come to a, a dotted line, and then we'll go, but this is happening. You, you talked against this. You thought this was never happening. No, no, no. What I said, just to be clear, and this isn't about me, I thought that the mainstream media who spoke about it the Monday after your win over Eddie Alvarez wasn't paying respect to the moment that was created at Madison Square Garden. I said, wait a month. It doesn't need to be talked about right now. That's all I was saying. But I've also said that it's being explored, which is what you're saying as well. But So tell me this. When you're going to Vegas, when you're going to go out there, are you meeting with Floyd? Is that set? You know... Only yes, only on Saturday I decided I was like, I'm gonna go out there. It's like, everything's good on the phone and that, but I need to go out there and really be in there and just get it. Cause I, since that last fight, since Christmas, since everything, I've been celebrating, I've been toasting. So I need to, I need to get my, my skin back in the game fully. I've been in the game from a distance, but now I'm gonna get back in and, and get everything set up. But that fight was more than just being explored. That fight has been, been in the works a, a, a while now. So we, it's, look, there's a lot of steps to get through to get the fight done. But it's the, it's the fight to make. It's the fight that people want. It's the fight I want. It's the fight I know I'm, I'm confident going in there. I've got the reach. I've got the youth. I've got the confidence. I've got the unpredictable style. You can't prepare for a style like me. So, 
a guy said to me, why conquer one world when you can conquer two? So I'm gonna go conquer two worlds. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's another, it's another day for me. Like, in all honesty, it's another day. I get a phone call, hey, Connor, you're fighting a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Okay. Hey, Connor, you're fighting a taekwondo black belt. Okay. Hey, Connor, you're fighting a UFC world champion. Okay. Hey, Connor, you're fighting boxing's pound for pound number one. Okay. It's another day for me. I get a phone call. I get the style of the opponent, the way he fights, and then I prepare to fight him. It's another fucking day for me. So that's it. Could you make this fight without the UFC? Sorry? Could you make this fight without the UFC? I, I, I mean, I believe so. With the, with the Ali Act, I believe I can. I believe if, especially now there's offers on the table. But I think it's smoother we're all involved. Okay. I think we're all about good business. I've done great business with the UFC, with Dana, with everyone. I think it's smoother if everyone just gets together, we get it involved. But again, everyone's got to know their place. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. What do you it. mean by that? Everyone has to know their place. I mean, everyone's got to know their place. What does that mean? It's not like... Who are you referring to? There's Mayweather promotions, there's the UFC, and now there's the newly formed McGregor promotions. Oh. And we're all in the mix. So that's what I'm saying. Nobody's my boss. I know Floyd likes to say, Dan is my boss in this, and he, he decides, hell no. Nobody decides this. If they let people go fight jiu-jitsu tournaments, they can't stop me going to fight a boxing, a boxing fight. So. Obviously, it's smoother to do it all together, but look, everyone's just got to know their place, and everyone does know their place. Low-key, everyone knows their place, so we'll figure it out. So Dana publicly said he'd like to offer you 25 million and Floyd 25 million. What do you make of that, that split and those numbers? Are, do those seem fair to you? I'm happy that there was an offer made. I'm happy that he made the offer. We're getting there. We're moving up. First of all, I was like, it's never gonna happen. He done an interview, it's never gonna happen. Now there's an offer on the table. It's still not there yet, but it's closing in on it. But I believe this is the first. If, if Manny and Floyd had done a half a billion, I believe this one, cross sports, never before seen, this is the first billion dollar fight. So people's gotta pay for a billion dollar fight. So it's getting there, we'll see. What would you like for it? Can you give us a number? 100 million, 200 million. What do you think is fair for you? Because he continues to say that he's the A-side, right? So you need to kind of come a little lower. What would you like? Tell us your he's terms. The, he's the scared side. Let's be honest. He's not trying to have a real fight. He needs rules to protect him. I don't need rules. So he can say he's this and he's that, but in, in reality, he's scared shitless. He is scared shitless. If I decide to just fight him straight up, fuck Look, fuck the UFC, fuck MMA, fuck boxing, fuck sports fighting. Let's just say we fight. I'd, it'd be the easiest fight, you know what I'm saying? It'd be the easiest fight ever. So he can say what he wants, and he can try and promote what way he wants, and he can try and pick up his net worth. It was a nice little play where he crossed my net worth to his net worth, even though that net worth is completely wrong. Yeah, tell us what it is. What is it? Can you tell oh, us for the record? Worth? Yeah. Figure what Forbes figured, and then figure more. That's a Jay-Z quote. Okay. I, I hit the Forbes is, look, you see, it's, don't worry about what my net worth is, but it's certainly not that. But it was a nice little play by him. I'm enjoying the little game we're having back and forth. I can't wait till we get it done. And it's like, there's the date. Let's, let's, let's get the fans wild for this and let's go and have a proper knock under, under specific rules to keep you alive. Do you genuinely believe, though, that he wants to get this done? Like, do you think that he really is going to try hard to make it happen? I'd love, to, I'd, lo I'd love to believe that, and I do, you know, I do think that, we'll see. As I close in, as I get the Nevada boxing eyes, as I close more on that, close more in on him, we'll find out then. But it's very hard to go back now. It's very hard to go back now, because I'm hunting now. I'm hunting now, so we'll see. I hope so. I, I, I believe so. I'd like to believe so. What do you think the chances are of it happening in 2017? I believe it could happen by the end of this year. I believe it will happen by the end of this year or early next year. Okay. I believe either side of, of that, it will happen. And now what do you say, like when you listen to like the old school boxing commentators, they literally laugh when this topic is brought up. What is the path to victory? An honest question. How I've been, do you listening, Floyd I've been listening to laughter all my career. Yeah. I've been listening to them laugh my whole career. They've been laughing. What? 
An Irish man win a, win a Cage Warriors world title? Hell no. You serious? An Irish man? An Irish man win a fight in the UFC? Hell no. Laugh. Laughs all around. An Irish... Okay, you gotta win. Now he wants to win a world title? Hell no, he's all talk, he's all hype, he's a joke. Laughter all around at the Joker. Then the Joker goes and wins the world title. Now he wants to win a second world title. More laughter. Listen, I've been... I don't know, mate, the sound of laughter and the sound of doubt motivates me, so I'm, I'm enjoying that. I seek that. I don't feel no doubt or, or, or I don't feel no... I don't feel that going to fight in any of these other UFC bombs right now. They need to rise up. Right now, they're, they're down there. I've got this situation where people are truly doubting me, like they doubted me at the very, very beginning. And that's motivating for me. That's what's gonna drive me to the gym when I need to go to the gym and to put in that work to get that win. So that's where we're at right now. When you envision the fight, do you see stopping him? My fist is bigger than his head. Seriously. He's a Malteser with eyeballs. 49 and 0, never been knocked down, never been knocked out. I know every single shot he's been hit with. I know every single shot he's been hurt with. I know cell paws have caused him a hell of a lot of trouble. I know everything. I've, I, trust me. I don't care what rule set it's under. Most people don't know shit about fighting. I'm gonna teach him about true fighting. And that's it. I land one on the, on the dome, anywhere on the dome. He's gonna know about it. And so for you, is it fair to say that of everything out there, any opportunity, this is what interests you most? That's fair, 100%. right? 100%. Okay. That's 100%. what you're going to explore. That's what you want. 100%. I believe the next time I step into a combat arena will be through the ropes, wearing 10 ounce or 8 ounce gloves. I believe so. So if you say that this will happen end of the year or early next year, that will be around a year since you last competed. You are a very, you love to compete. Can you sit on the sidelines for that long? Can you do that? Tell you what, for a hundred million, I'll sit for another year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. I'm switching sometimes. Yes. But you know, fuck it. This is historic. Fighting Khabib, what the fuck his name is. Tony, Donkey, Ho like, Jose. Fighting these, even Woodley for the tour. It's not this. Sometimes you've got to be patient with, 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 with situations, and I feel this is one of them. Plus the situation around me, he's about to have a baby, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, I'm looking, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm in a different mindset right now, so I'm happy. Everything seems to be just working perfectly for me, so the little bit of weight is not too bad. I'm okay with it this time, for now. So it could be two years since you fight in the UFC again. If you go through this waiting period, and then you have the fight, and then you take a break. I mean, we could look at an extended period of time. Are you worried about what would happen to your belts? No. Like I said, no matter what they try, they've already stripped me a one. They've already tried to do this and tried to do that. Like I said, my shadow looms large over that. I am that promotion. There's more people here than is currently at, a U at the UFC event right now. That should tell you everything you need to know. So they can try and fake all this other shit. Look, it means nothing. But once I get back, once I crack in again and I decide, okay, I'm back, I'll be back the way I was back and I'll be continually competitive again. I'll be back active. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like I fought a hell of a lot of times that last time. You know what I'm saying? Since the ACL surgery, fight, 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 fight. It's like, I'm 28 years of age, Ariel. I'm only young. I'm only a young pup. So. I'm only entering, I'm not even in my prime yet, I don't feel. So I'm only entering into it. So as far as saying it'll be two years for the UFC fight, I don't, I don't see that. I feel the, the Floyd situation will happen and then I'll be rolling back in. You know what I'm saying? But we'll see, look, we'll see. We'll see what happens. When you won the RTE Sports Person of the Year Award, and by the way, congratulations on that. I know that meant a lot to you. You mentioned Ari Emanuel and Patrick Whitesell in the interview. You said they have yet to speak to me, and I think that was the first time that you referred to them by name. Here we are, end of January. Have you still not talked to them, the new owners of the UFC? No, not since, not since that. You know, look, Dane is operating. Dane is like the, the operating guy of it, so I've spoke to him many times. I don't know what the situation, I don't think nobody knows what the situation is. The Lorenzo regime is gone. Bar Dana. Everyone that rolled in there with Lorenzo was like, I'm sure Dana walks into that office and doesn't know who, who's, who's even there no more. So, look, I don't, 
I just leave them to it. I handle my business, they handle their business. When we come together, we do great business. Uh, and that's it. I've been co in constant contact with Dana. I love Dana. I've done, you know, Dana's, Dana's a cool motherfucker. We've done, great, we've done great things together. And we will continue to do great things together. And we'll just see where it goes. I've spoke to them. I've spoke to Ari and Patrick, not since the fight. But I've met them briefly. But I, who knows, you know, people run their ship differently. So these just seem to be people that run the ship differently, but I'm sure it will happen and we'll sit down and they'll get to, they'll get to meet the businessman and not just the fire and we'll, we'll go from there. But you have said you want them to come visit you. You want to talk about the future. You want a conversation. You are the star of the company. It's a major reason why it's sold for $4.025 I mean, I would equate it to if a new owner bought the Cleveland Cavaliers, it wouldn't take them five months to sit down with LeBron James, would it? So don't you think it's a bit surprising that you haven't had this conversation? You're a troublemaking motherfucker, but I love it. And everyone here loves it. Uh, look. After the fight, I said I want to sit down, but I also said I want some space too. So I kind of said it was a sit. So we know where we're at. Christmas was here, the holidays. I'm preparing for a new chapter in my life. They're preparing for a new chapter in their life. Look, whatever, we'll come together, we'll get it done when it's time to get it done. Right now there's something else, something humongous that needs to be get done. And it ain't really involved them as much as they might think it is. You know, this has involved me and Floyd. So we'll talk when we need to talk. Do you think that they need to make this fight happen, the floyd Connor fight happen? Because you look at 208, you look at 209, Ronda's on hiatus, Brock's not coming back, John Jones is suspended, you're, you know, figuring this, they need to make this fight to start making some money, right? They're in debt, they took out a massive loan, it would almost behoove them to do everything in their power to get this done, would it not? I mean, it's hard for me to go into that kind of, like, deep into that, what they need, what they don't need. They are who they are. They know what they're doing. You don't reach that, that level where you can purchase something like that at that price. And that wasn't their only purchase around that time. They purchased something else crazy as well. They're a mega. These are mega, mega people that know what they're doing. So, look, we'll see what happens. I, I believe the numbers and the, and the, and the revenue generated isn't what... They may have thought, I don't know, who knows what these TV deals get, what, what happens with these TV deals when they, when they get done and what happens to that. But these are not stupid people. These are very intelligent business people. So they'll, they'll do what they need to do when they need to do it. You were supposed to fight at UFC 200 and you did not want to attend the press conference in April and they put their foot down and removed you from the card and there was a big drama with you retiring and coming back and eventually fought at 202. When you found out that they were going to allow Ronda Rousey to not speak to the media before her fight, what did you think? I didn't give a fuck. I'm the two-way world champion at that stage. I'm fucking Richard and Rich. I don't give a bollocks. <laughs> when, when Ronda lost, yeah? Yeah. I'm, I wakes up to all these messages. Now, now let's see what they do, and now let's, I'm like, what? I'm not, I don't celebrate, like, I love, I love Ronda. I've always been a big supporter of Ronda. And people, when she loses that second one, people are like trying to make, make me celebrate now, now they're not nobody. So what kind of, that's, that's a wrong mindset. I don't celebrate another person's, another person's defeat like that. That's, that's weak. That's a weak individual that does that. And there's people that are trying to celebrate when I lost that, got nothing got to do with it. That ain't the sign of a champion. That ain't the sign of a true, a true champion. So I, I, I couldn't believe it when you know. Look, I, I don't, I don't know. We're all, we're all in on it on our own. We're all, what, but someone else is, a, is and isn't allowed, or what someone else does and doesn't do, has no effect on me and what I do. I'm doing what I do. She's doing what she's doing. Everyone else is doing what they're doing. It is what it is. She didn't have to do the media and got away with that. That's great. That's. I probably would have liked it. If they'd have done that to me, I would have showed up at UFC 200. But we split the card. UFC 200 done great numbers. UFC 202 done great numbers. It also gave me that extra bit of time that looking back, I probably needed. I probably needed that extra time. So everything worked out perfect for me. So I'm sitting there and I heard that she, she requested no media and they gave no media. I was happy for her because that's what she asked for. And then I also didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? But the next chilling. time you come back, will you ask for no media as well? 
I've created my own media empire. For UFC 202, I pushed out more content than ESPN, Fox, MMA fighting, all of them. I pushed out more content than all of them for a longer period of time. That's the animal I am. That's the kind of animal I am. You wanna, you wanna give out to me for not doing media? No problem. I'll create my own media and I'll double up on all your media channels that are promoting the fight. And that's what, that's what I've done. So, whatever. I'm just gonna carry on doing what I'm doing. Have, you said I've been quiet. I've been quiet, but really, when's, when's a day's, when has a day gone by? You haven't heard about me. So, I'm playing this perfectly. So that's where I'm at. You've done a lot of impressive things in the UFC and prior to the UFC. But to me, the most impressive thing that you did was the way you handled the loss to Nate Diaz. You put on the suit, you took it like a champ, you faced the media, you did not run away, and, 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 and you came back, you took the same fight, you wanted it. That, to me, was the blueprint how a champion should handle a loss. And it was really admirable. I feel like you can show that to a young kid and say, this is how you handle it. And Dominic Cruz did a similar thing. And I don't want to pick on Ronda, but she did not do that. So for you, is that surprising? I know we're all different people, but do you think that it would have maybe helped her out in the Amanda Nunes fight if you don't shy away from talking about it, if you stand up there, face the music, and then move on so that you can close that wound? Look, she came in in phenomenal shape, Ronda yep. did. She, I no doubt she was backstage hungry, f training. I knew by the shape of her. I knew by looking at her on the scales. She came in with everything. She got hit with, a, she got hit with an inside leg kick and a jab in the opening bell. And when that, listen, these gloves are very, very small. If things go wrong, if you get one crack, everything can, everything can just slip away. So I don't think, she handled it her way. I don't think what way she handled it was incorrect. It was. She, she did, she, she went to, she, she done what she had to do. She got away from the spotlight. She focused on her preparation. She got hit early and I went downhill and that's it. That's the fight game, it's a cruel business. But she handled it the way she should handle it and she came in, in shape uh, and that's it. Um, as far as the way, I, the way I handled it, I handled it the way I felt I needed to handle it. I owned up, I'm a cocky motherfucker. But if you come in and you get me, if you come in and you get me, I'll stand before you and stand before everyone and say, you got me. I'll get you next time. And that's it. Every human being, everyone in here at some stage, we face loss. We've all lost something. So, fuck it. We all know how we feel. You know, yeah, we all know how, how a loser on the night feels because we have all lost at one point or other in our lives. So, I made no mistakes. I made no excuses. I manned up took it on the chain, got back to the drawing board, prepared, came back, and rearranged Nate's face in the second fight. So it was perfect. So you mentioned Aldo, Ferguson, Khabib, all these guys, this is the first time that you mentioned Nate. And he has been adamant that he wants the third fight. He's not answering the Nate's phone. Nate's a bitch. Nate's a fucking bitch. And let me tell you why. I've got the biggest, I had the, I had the biggest respect for Nate. And I still have big respect for Nick, he's out doing his thing. But when he took that phone call or that video call off Floyd Mayweather, I was like, hello Floyd's fans. And he was Floyd's bitch that night. I was like, you fucking pussy. You absolute pussy. He should have been on that, when he had that video call, he should have been on the other end of that line. And when Floyd was saying, you made McGregor tap out, he's like, yeah, I did. And Floyd is saying, I'm gonna finish the job. He should have said, shut your fucking mouth, I'll strangle you too. And post that everywhere. And then all of a sudden, it would have been like, fuck Floyd. It would have been me and A again. But he was Floyd's bitch that night. He was Floyd's employee that night. So look, fuck Nate, fuck Nick, fuck the Diaz brothers. And if you wanna be down with the Diaz brothers, then fuck you too. Look, he took a hell of a lot of smacks that night. Yeah. His face droops to the left. Look at him. Look real close at him. His face droops to the left now. You don't take them left hammers off for 25 minutes and come back normal. So, he was not normal on that phone call. I was expecting a different situation, but I couldn't believe it when I watched it. I watched like 10 minutes of it, and Floyd's like, hey, Nate, say hello to my fans. I'm like, nah. Yeah, fucking bitch. It was the biggest bitch move I've ever saw.
So whatever, it is what it is. Now you're, now you're back in the queue. Now you're at the back of the queue. And I'll get to Nate. Don't get me wrong. Me and Nate will throw down again, 100%. 100% me and Nate will throw down and finish. The, it's one apiece. We'll finish it off. And I, I'd, I'd imagine it will be for the lightweight world title. 155 will come in like a skeleton wrapped in cling film. And I'll end the whole thing for him. So if his, if his team are wise, they'll talk him out of it and say, you've made some money. Your face is drooping to the left. Your speech is slurred. Chill now. Enjoy the money. But... They're not the most intelligent people, so I'm sure me and Nate will go again. You made it very clear that you want Floyd next, no doubt about that. But as far as MMA is concerned, is there anyone that you kind of think, oh, this would be a challenge, this guy is interesting to me? Anyone at all? Sounds like a lot of Khabib. Fuck them all! <laughs> Fuck every one of them! Yeah, you see Anderson? What's Anderson talking about? Yes. What the fuck is Anderson Silva talking about? He keeps mentioning my name over and over again. Look, I'll fight any one of them. Make sure the numbers are right. Make sure the situation is right. I'll fight any one of them at any given time. We've got the Floyd situation lined up, but there's many of them that are there. We've got the featherweight situation, the lightweight situation. The welterweight situation, that's a real situation also. I can win and slap that fool around. I will go in and slap that fool around the octagon. Woodley? And, Woodley, and take that third belt, no problem. That's a real situation. Anderson, booking, who else? I don't know who else. George St. Pierre. All the, GSP is another one. I got a phone call saying GSP might come back. I'm, did you see that union thing? Yes. What happened with that union thing? They I'm say watching that this union thing. It was, yes. like an it was like a press conference. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? They're standing up, they're all wearing the same t-shirt. They're saying, Connor, please. Connor, please, you know what's right. Help us out, Connor. And George is saying, Connor's a good person. I know he gets paid well, but he doesn't get paid enough. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? The only reason you're standing in the middle of that union is because you couldn't get the deal you want. You're the fakest of everyone up there. So whatever, that's another situation maybe down the line. There's plenty of people there. Floyd is where I'm at right now. Okay. In the MMA community, there's plenty of schmucks that can get their ass whooped, no problem. Do you think a union will happen in MMA? Do you feel like there needs to be one for the fighters? A union, do you feel like there needs to be one? Are you interested in joining any of them? There needs to be something, but that wasn't it. That was a bunch of, I don't know what that was. That was like a failed promoter. Your man, what's his, what's his name? Jorn Rebney. That was like a failed promoter. George was up there angry because he couldn't get the deal he wanted. It was just the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. As fighters, as a person who's dedicated everything, and as a person that can retire now comfortably, and I look at situations that my peers are in and people that are assigned to the promotion, there needs to be something. I'm not sure what it is. There needs to be something. I just don't know what it is. I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on my family's security, my family's financial security. That's all I can do. So when I saw that, I just thought it was the biggest, fakest load of shit I've ever seen in my life. So I don't know. I wish everyone well, but you need to focus on yourself. You need to realize what you, you need to stop. You need to stop putting your hand out. Everyone wants hands out. Everyone wants things. Everyone wants things for free. Or everyone, you know what I'm saying? You've got to put in the work, you've got to grind, you've got to, you've got to go through the struggle and you've got to get it. If you deserve it, go get it. If you're being, you know, don't complain, don't cry, get the fucking work and go get it. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people cry and complain and put their hand down, beg and it never, it never goes well. So I don't know. I don't know about, there needs to be something. I just don't know what that is. Fair enough. Your coach, John Cavanaugh, told me after your win in, in New York, that after, or excuse me, leading up to 196. These bodies are nice. Who's on the vlogging? <laughs> we toast tonight. We toast tonight. He told me that. I get another one. This one's running dry. <laughs> Go ahead, no problem. Sorry. He told me leading up to 196, it was getting to the point where you were kind of doing your own thing, where you guys would pass each other. You're coming into the gym, he's leaving the gym. 
and something happened, and then you had a, a moment after the loss to Nate, like, we need to get back on track. Can you tell us more about that? How, how much did you guys drift, and how did you get back on track? He'd organize a session, and I wouldn't be there. And, and I'd show up and do my own session. I'd open up the gym at 2 a.m. and be my own, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I just left. It didn't become a coach-student situation anymore. And, and in the game of MMA, where there's so many intricate parts, you need to have that. I needed to have my coach by my side, and it just wasn't what it was for the second one. So the loss, as, it, as, as I said before, defeat is the secret ingredient, ingredient to success, and that's what it was. I lost, I got my ass whooped that night. We looked at each other and we came back, and I was like, we became student coach, coach student again, and, and that's it. So. Something that needed to happen. It is what it is. These things happen. People are together like glue one minute and then they just drift and like it, it's a crazy journey. It's a crazy journey we've been on, Ariel. Like a real crazy journey. Honestly, I'm only signed to the UFC three years. Three years. So we went from nothing to everything in the quickest space of time. He had his stuff. I had my stuff. We're, we're involved in so many different business stuff. Obviously, that's going to happen. But the defeat brought us back together and, and said, OK, now they're down on us. Let's come back together and let's go get it back. And that's what we've done. We came back, coached student, and, and, and got it done. So We're running out of time. A few non-MMA. And this has flown by. Are you having fun? Fuck me. I'm Are enjoying you myself so much. You're having fun. Enjoying myself so much. This is a real honor. It's great to be here. A report came out today that you have turned down an offer from WWE to appear at WrestleMania. Is that accurate? I tell you, there's a lot of offers that I've turned down. I got offered the Predator movie. There's a new Predator movie coming out. And the guys came to me and was like, did you see that horse thing I done, the horse yes, racing? Pegasus. That was like three days. Three days solid work for a hell of a lot of money. For three days. I didn't even know it was acting. I just, when they sent me the contract, I just checked how much I'm getting paid and how much they want me to work and I signed on the dotted line. And then when I got to the horse track, okay, you've got the act now. I was like, here's your lines. I was like, what the fuck? I just saw the number. But it was a hell of a lot of fun we done that. But during that three day course, the people from Pred Predator who are having this new Predator movie, a blockbuster fucking, they came in and tried to sell the whole shit. We want you to be the main guy and you're gonna fight Predator, and I'm like, this sounds brilliant. How much? Uh, not enough. And then we went back and forth, we're negotiating, and then the number climbed up, and it's like, if I was to do it, it would mean eight weeks in Canada, or in Toronto or somewhere. It's too, it's too long a time. You can't do a million things at once. The Pegasus thing was one thing, the horse racing thing was one thing, because it was like three days, in and out. This is one thing, it's in and out, enjoy the fans. I, have you get, I get energy from this. I'll leave this and go to work and go try and make fights and go try and, you know, go try and push on. Seven, eight weeks on a film set is heavy as fuck. Plus, it would have crept in around the time that D is due. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get tricky with that. So I turned down that offer. Same way with the WWE, those situations. Look. I don't need nothing right now. I'm chilling. I'm trying to make something that I want to make happen. I'm trying to make something that I feel will be historic, that will, long after I'm gone, it will be told to kids. You know what I'm saying? Like some historical shit. So that's where I'm at right now, and I'm trying to focus on that. Give me a drink over there. You want my, yes. Yeah. You're mad, cunt. So just to be clear, no WrestleMania, right? Sorry? No, no WrestleMania. Never say never. <laughs> what did they, did they want you to wrestle or just appear? I don't know. I know there's been conversation. I know Triple H was at the, at the show. Um, I'd love to go into that WWE and have a real knock. Let one of them have a real knock and see what's what. But uh, we'll see. This conversation's ongoing. So I've torn down some things. The conversation's still ongoing. What about Game of Thrones? There was a story that you were going to be on Game of Thrones. What's going on there? That's the big, I'm, 
that's a big, like that was everywhere. Yeah. I never even heard about it. <laughs> I never even heard about it. And it's like, I'm going to be in Game of Thrones. Not once. I tell you, I heard about it once. Out, like very straight after the Nate Diaz 2 fight. Ari and Patrick were standing there, the new owners of the UFC, backstage in, in, the, in the dressing room after I beat Nate. Dana was in front of them, and Dana's saying, these guys want you to be in Game of Thrones. And I'm sitting there banged up, my shin is in a heap. I might have been kicking his knee straight for 25 minutes. My legs in bits, and he's trying to offer me a Game of Thrones role. And I'm looking at him saying, listen, come at me with the, come at me with the shit I want to hear. I'm not trying to be in show business. I'm trying to be in the fight business. Come at me with a real number to fight again. So that was the only time I've ever heard the word Game of Thrones. Weird. And then it went everywhere, like yeah. months later. So I don't know where that came from, but I have never been in contact with nobody from Game of Thrones about starring in Game of fucking Thrones. <laughs> All right, well now we That's know. That's that. Do you still want shares in the Don't company? Don't believe everything you hear. Yeah, it's true. Don't believe everything you hear. That's why we're here to get hear. the answers. Do you still want shares in the company, in the UFC? I, Do you still want shares? You said you wanted shares. Doesn't seem to be doing too good at the minute, does it? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. There's 5,000 people here. There's about 4,000 people over there. Maybe they should want shares in McGregor uh, company. So, I don't know. Look, we'll see. I mean, I've, I've put a lot of... Blood, sweat, and tears into in, in, into the into my career, my into the UFC. Uh, they've helped me, and I've helped them. And it's been an equal climb. So I'd love to be a part of it and help build the next generation, the next wave, and keep keep it climbing. So we'll see. I mean, I don't think that's right next. I think I I knew that when I was saying that this is not going to be next. I think down the line, I'd like to be a, I'd like to be truly involved in it. I'm very passionate about the sport of mixed martial arts, the sport of true fighting, the company, the UFC. I've, I've, made, every, I've made my life there. I would love to be truly brought in and, and, and made a part of it. We'll see where it goes. I don't know. You mentioned the newly formed McGregor Promotions. What is that? Are you going to start putting on events, MMA, boxing? What are you doing? I, I, you know, do you remember that announcement? Yes. That was, that was, I was gonna stand in the middle of that octagon and be like, McGregor, I had a date booked and everything. I went and I met a promotion or a um, arena, the O2. I had fights and everything planned out in my head. Wow. I was gonna host a show. MMA? Yeah. Okay. The same way Nick Diaz hosted War. Yep, yep. I was gonna do that. Okay. And then last minute, I was like, ah, just leave it. There's no, you already got the two belts. You're already in a very strong position. Wow. Let's just chill on it. So that's what I was saying, there was many situations I could have went, but we left it where it was, but I'd still, you know, I'd still like to, and not, not, not as a competitor yet, but as, as, as a place where I could help the next generation grow and feed them into the UFC. And then also down the line, use that as a negotiation tactic, eventually get to what I was planning in association with. I want in association with. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's where this may, this may with a situation. It's going to be involved with the UFC or whatever. Good man, see him, because that could have been spiked. That could have been spiked. I could have been fucked up on here. <laughs> Good man, brother. Um, I want in association with. I think I've earned that. I think I deserve to be separated from the rest. So that's my intention. I told you a long time ago. Eventually, I want to be in association with. Yep. So. That's where we're going with it. We'll see what happens down the line. Do you think you will put on fights in 2017, McGregor Promotions? I, I believe it's a strong possibility. Okay. 100%. Why not? It was, like, it was, it was booked for March. Like, it was proper booked. Wow. It was an army getting formed to build it. And then it was like, there's so much going on. Let's just sit on that for a while. So, we sit on it for a while. But... It's not to say we close it, we just sit on it for a while and we see where it goes. Like I said, there's many options for me. That's why I'm like, you know what, Predator? Thanks very much for the offer. And I know it would have been crazy to fight the Predator and, and have like a historic Hollywood movie and all that. Or, or walk in and WrestleMania. Or, 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 you know, there's so many great things. But it's like, I have so many. I'm the only one with options. Hmm. Floyd has no other option. Floyd can't go and fight. Maidana, or, 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 or even Pac, you know, 
It's not going to do... Even do, Pacquiao has mentioned maybe that. Maybe Pacquiao. No, he's mentioned he wanted Pacquiao you. Was, yeah, exactly. Pacquiao won the fight. That's another, that's another option. Maybe fuck Floyd. Maybe fuck the A-side. Maybe let's see. Maybe I'll just fight Pacquiao instead. Why not do that? Why not fight Manny and fuck Floyd? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the only one in the fight game with options. Everyone else needs to fight me. I can fight any single one of them. So... I'm, I'm in the best spot, which makes me the A-side. So that's where we're at right now. Do you, do you think that fight does over 4 million pay-per-views? 100%. If the Manny Floyd fight done 4.4, 100% it does over 4. You also mentioned, uh, so you didn't make that announcement about the McGregor promotions, but you mentioned that you're going to be a father. And congratulations. Mazel tov, as they say. I'm a big fan of fatherhood. I have three children. It's a beautiful thing, and your life is going to change only for the better. Are you having a boy or a girl? Let's break some news here. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. We're having a boy. We're having a boy. Yeah. The only time, the only time my records are going to be broken is by my own spawn. <laughs> Honestly. The only time my records are going to be broken are by my own child. I'm going to be training that child out the womb. Straight away, he's going to be trained to kill somebody. So that's where I'm at. So Dee's not here. She won't be happy about that, but I don't know. Look, fuck it. I'm having a boy. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, so nervous. But that's it. We're having, a, we're having a, 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 a baby boy. Connor Jr.? Is that his name? Listen, fuck off now for a minute. <laughs> She's gonna kill me now over that. How so, is she doing? Oh, she's doing amazing, absolutely. She's glowing, so I'm very proud of her. She's, she's carrying my child, and I, I'm, 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 I'm very, very happy. I can't wait, can't wait to get to that next level with her and, and, and see my child in front of me, and then go from there. I don't know what way it's gonna make me. So I hope, I hope it just settles me and calms me down a little bit, and I can just focus on my child and, 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 and prepare him for his life, so that's where my mind is at. And it's May, right? Because at first you said March, then you said May? Now it could be April. Oh, okay. So it's like, it could be April. Sure. Look, I don't know, fuck off asking these intimate questions. You okay, wait, but let me ask you this honestly. It was, I thought it was a beautiful moment because you, for the first time, actually showed some fear in something as a UFC fighter. You said, I'm afraid, I, I think you said you're crapping in your jocks, if, if I get the lingo correctly, right? How do you feel about it now? Are you warming up to it, or are you still feeling the same way? Every man can relate to that feeling. Yeah, you know, I've gone off the rails a little bit since it. Like, since that fight, I've gone off the rails a little bit, like I've been... I don't know what way I'm at, so I don't know what way I'm gonna react to it. I just, I know I'm, I know I'm gone off the rails a little bit. That's what I'm saying. When I, when I hope when it comes down to it, I can just chill and just, and just get my head right and just get together and just, just do. You know what I'm saying? Just, just be a man and just be a father to my child. Um, and, and, and that's it. Like I said, I'm still shit. I'm still shitting. I'm still crabbing my jokes. So we'll see. I hope. I hope so. I, I mean, I don't know. It's a beautiful thing, and congratulations on the wedding of your sister as well recently. And it was a phenomenal uh, occasion. It was like something out of Mafia. It was like a Mafia wedding. Yeah, it was so nice. It was, it was a great night. I have one last question, but before I ask you this question, I don't usually do this, but I just want to know, did we cover it all? Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you want to get out there? Oh, fuck, I don't know, it's been a crazy journey. Thank every single one of you motherfuckers, I swear on my life. Every one of you look great. Every one of you look great. Bow ties, suits. This motherfucker, this motherfucker got a tux and a white scarf on. That's how slick this motherfucker is. Thank you so much, everyone. Me and Ariel. Ariel, we were on that show together. The MMA hour. How many people in here know Ariel? Bow you know what I'm saying? We were on that show together many years ago. We had a great chemistry, great conversation. I don't know what's going on here. I'm blown away by everything. It blows but me away. Thank you. So all I can say is thank you. Keep your eyes peeled. 2017, we're coming for you. Thank you so much, everyone.
That was beautiful. I actually wanted to ask you if you wanted to thank the crowd, but you just did. But we have come a long way from you eating blueberries and saying you didn't have a pot to piss in. You didn't have a car. You didn't have a suit. Look at you now. Now I've got the rollie on stage. Now okay. I've got the rollie on stage. So let's end on this. Wherever that camera is, what everyone want, what's the message to Floyd? Say it right now. What's the message to him? What's the next step? Fuck Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to see you soon. I'm going to see you soon. All right, there it is. Now, we have a couple of fan questions, so I will give it up to you know about this. There's a few great fan questions. Our MC is going to ask you to uh, say where you're from and ask your questions, so take it away. Here we go. Connor, Croke Park, who would you fight? Croke Park, who would you fight? And when? Anyone not from the Republic of Ireland. I'd love that one. Bring someone over, we go to war in Crow Park. So that's, maybe, maybe soon that will happen. I hope so. Is that still one of your goals, Crow Park? It's been a dream of mine a long time. Again, that's another, that could be a McGregor promotion situation. We'll see, but I'd love that. We'll see what happens. Okay, who's next? Connor. I always wanted to describe your feelings when I say this name, John Kavanaugh. When he says the name John Kavanaugh, what comes to mind? How do you feel? Genius. An absolute genius. When it comes to unarmed combat in its purest form, that man is a fucking genius. Say what you want. He knows what he's talking about. He's created me. So that's, that's what I'll say. One word, genius. Who's next? There's a microphone, I can't, oh, there's a microphone, so who's next? Hi, Connor. Hello. 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 Carly from Newcastle. Um, at what point did you realize that the law of attraction was working for you? Fuck me, I don't, you know, that motherfucker's been a part of my shit since I'm 16. 15, 16, I started trying to play with that. Started trying to, Start trying to visualize things. I used to drive into a car park and try and visualize a car spot right next to the door and try and get that car spot and really try and visualize. I've been playing with that law of attraction and visualization a long time. So since I'm 60, since I first discovered it, if you can see it here, even the other day, I left my home and like, I was flustered leaving the home. I had to rush before I had to catch a flight here. I tried to rush into town, and I was in a hurry, panicking. I got pulled over by the old bill in a, in a sweat. And then I hit the city center, and then I hit a traffic jam. I'm saying it's like when you, when you feel that rush, or when you feel, you know, it just, it just keeps going and going and going. So I just sat and count to 10, patient, and then everything opened up for me, and I rolled through. So I don't know, it's been a part of my life a long time. I've been playing with it. I can't pinpoint an actual moment, but I tell you what, it fucking works. All right, who's next? Connor, 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 over here, over here, this way. Connor, Connor, question for Connor. Yeah, left, here, here. I can't hear, I, I can hear something coming out of there, so I'm just here. ask the question. I'm here. Okay, Look okay, I can, there I can see it, I can see it. There we go, I can okay. see it. Okay, uh, on a YouTube documentary, uh, the night before the Max Holloway fight, uh, you once quoted, Constant repetition carries conviction. Have you always had this attitude to life before MMA? I was actually reading that one off a book. So I, I, I quote and I quote. But that's the truth. You, 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 can, you do it enough times, you do it the best. And that's it. Work hard and, and fucking get it done. And that's it, constant, constant repetition carries conviction. It's a true quote. And it's, it's worked for me. I've done the same thing over and over and over and over again every single day, and I got really damn good at it. So that's it. You do it enough times, you'll get good at it. All right, I believe there's a couple more left. Hello, Connor. Go Come ahead. This way. Here we go. Look this way to your right, to your right. David yes. McPartland from Manor Hamilton, County Leecher, Maryland. Over here to your right, all the way from lovely Leecher. Oh, you're going to have to speak up. It's hard to hear you. Can you say that again? Connor, to your right. David from Leitrim here. 
Psychology and having the right mindset is one of the fundamental components of the fight game. I'm wondering what your process is before and during a fight to manage your emotions. Thanks. They talk about speed, power, quickness, calmness is an attribute that's many, many times overlooked. I just try and remain calm. Like I said, I was stressed out in my box. I got pulled over by the old bill. I got fucking stuck in a traffic jam. I just tried to remain calm, count to 10, and watch everything open up. That's the same way in a fight, pre, during, and post. Just remain calm. Thank you for that. Here's another one over here to your left, Connor. Hi, Connor. Connor, over here. Right over Hi. there. Connor, right here. Hiya. Connor, hi, Ariel. How's it going? Connor, quick question. If you had to have a dinner party at the Mac Mansion and you could invite three guests, real, fictional, any time in life, alive. Tell you what. Who's the guests? I don't eat with people that I wouldn't starve with. Do you know what I'm saying? I eat with my own. I don't try and bring people in and have this kind of fake thing. Don't share a dinner table with people that you wouldn't starve with. So the three people I'd invite, my mother, my father, and my family, that's who I'd invite. Is that good? I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Manchester. Let's go party tonight.